Good afternoon, and thanks, everybody, for being here. It's getting nice and cozy. Um, so this is titled A European Success Story, but kind of like the women panels, I don't really want to go into a lot of detail about being European. We may, we may get to that later. But what I'd really like to do is have Iyad tell you a little bit about his company, and then I'll ask him about the parts he doesn't mention and so forth. But ideally, we're going to do kind of a reprise of the conversation we had this morning, which was a lot of fun and probably took longer than 15 minutes. But anyway, just how many of you here are on ResearchGate? Any, one or two. So it's not exactly Facebook, but uh, <laughs> among scientists, it actually is. What, what percentage of scientists worldwide are on ResearchGate? 60%. Okay. And just explain briefly what it is, how it started, but briefly. Yeah. So I'm a scientist and um, what I kind? was, yes, I'm still sort of scientist. And I was frustrated with the fact that negative results, which is 90% of science, is not getting shared in a social network. So this is what I built, a social network for scientists. And negative and positive, I mean, I asked you to be brief. You can be a little longer than that. Yeah, so. <laughs> He's a great panelist. <laughs> in science, um, what you think, and this is how science works, you always focus on positive results. This is, means you do an experiment, and the experiment gives you what you expect. Um, but in order to get to this result, you have to do a lot of research. So you create failed experiments. And in science, you always differentiate between failed experiments and positive results, which I think is wrong. And so how much negative how many, just talk a little bit about the pr proportion of negative results. Yeah, so in science, and as I said, I was a scientist, 90% um, of that what I created is just negative. Um, and this is something what is really, really damaging um, us, because I'm pretty sure if you would collect all these data sets and connect them to the right people, to the right scientists in the world, we would have been much far and more further down throughout, like to treat can, uh, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's disease, etc. And this is something what we try to change. Yeah, so if there's so many negative results, people could learn from those just as they learn from the positive ones. And exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's the problem is science, as you know science, right? It, it exists for so long time and it was influenced by religion and it was influenced how you communicate scientific results. And this is something what we now try to disrupt. Um, and if, fantastic story is my old professor uh, here in Germany, um, how it started when I wanted to work as a medical doctor and trying to build up ResearchGate. I went to him and I asked him, you know, I would like to do this half time and the other half I would like to work um, on ResearchGate. And he said to me, um, I used the German word, get this Furlefanz out of your head, um, get this Birchett out of your head and focus on your academic career. You're almost a professor. And um, I quit my job on the next day went back to Harvard, um, and um, yeah, finally the, this professor joined ResearchGate roughly a year ago, and using this now actively. And so, just to, to explain your credibility in the market, can you just name your three big investors? Yeah, so the first round, uh, first investor was uh, Matt Kohler from Benchmark. Um, the second round was Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, and the third round uh, was a personal investment from Bill Gates. In a $35 million round. Yes, even 35, yeah. So you see why they call this an Ameri a European success story. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, European success story, but the funny thing is I had to move out of Germany to make it successful, and we went back, and we got, went back to Berlin, and building now in Berlin, you know, a top world-changing startup, one of the startups we're waiting for in Germany, um, but it took some time to, you know, move forward and move back. And so you have 120 people in, in your company. Where are most of them from? Um, most of them are not from Germany. <laughs> so we have 70% are foreigners um, from all around the place, US, Ukraine, Russia, um, Africa, from different countries, Namibia. So we have from almost everywhere 
um, people working at ResearchGate, which is, I think is very important because we're building a global product and you need all these different influences and the people influencing a product where, you know, especially science is very general and very, um, you, you have it very similar in different countries, but there are still huge differences between, you know, India, China, US, Germany. And so they're mostly living in Berlin? Yes, they're all living in Berlin. Okay. okay. And now tell me a little bit about your, your user population. You have something like 4 million scientists. Yeah. So 20% of our users comes from the US. Um, and the second strong is roughly 8, 9% from India. And then UK, Germany, China. So you see where science is happening. And um, this is something what we have built from the beginning that we're not connecting as, for example, Facebook did friends, which you already know. We tried to connect people to data and to people they don't know yet. And we had some very intriguing success stories, success, successful collaborations in our network, which was, which lead to, or which was leading to um, scientific breakthroughs, which wouldn't have been happened if ResearchGate would not exist. So give an example. One example um, from, so there was a Nigerian researcher um, and he found an Italian professor uh, he started communicating, collaborating with him, and he had a young baby which died in his hospital in Nigeria, and he didn't know why. So he took blood samples and sent the blood samples to the Italian professor who analyzed the blood samples. And what he found was a new type of yeast which, yeah, which is known for infecting plants and not human beings, but it mutated and now infects also human beings. Um, and now they start analyzing this new infectious agent, which is firstly described now there, and this wouldn't have happened if they wouldn't have met on ResearchGate. So it could be the new bird flu, but they haven't figured it out yet. It's, it's not a virus, it's a yeast, but yeah, okay, it, but it's also as dangerous as that, yes. Yeah, I mean, it killed the baby, so. <laughs> yes, it killed the baby, exactly, yeah. but I just have to be exact, and people wouldn't, would tell me I'm Very not a scientist. <laughs> so Thanks. this was, yeah. Yes, I, uh, I stand corrected. Uh, so the thing that fascinates me, you have now these four million scientists and millions and millions of papers uploaded, but those papers are still, they're captive, they're PDFs, they have their own data sets. The next vision, I mean, it's great that the scientists are talking, but what about making those results, if you have five clinical trials, mashing them together, talk a bit about how you can actually move from millions of data silos to big data. And if people in the audience could not talk, please, folks, in the audience, gentlemen, if you, you're welcome to go somewhere else, but this guy is really interesting. Please give him attention. Go ahead. Um, so we, as I said, we have more than 30 million publications, millions of raw data sets and negative data sets, DNA data sets. Um, and the next step is really mashing up all these data sets and categorizing them and try, and this is the next big step we have to do is helping others from outside through an API to analyze these data sets. Um, this is something, especially clinical trials, you know, you have huge clinical trials where, you know, in different countries they're measuring different things and sometimes the conclusions are different even if they're the same. And this is something where I see a huge problem for us in the society because we having the right results already somewhere in this world, but we have to connect them in a smarter way. And I call it always socialize the data, which I think is a very, very important part in order to analyze these big data, what, what, you know, what's going to be even bigger in the future in science. So what are you constructing to help make that happen? So what we do is um, we're creating some sort of a tree of science. Um, just imagine a graph, an ontology slash um, taxonomy, where we just imagine you have biology, virology, viruses, virus types, etc., and connecting all these different, let's call them keywords, and now taxonomize or categorizing these data sets and connecting then, for example, gene therapy with viruses and liver cancer and say, okay, this person who's doing liver cancer research should look at these studies from gene therapy because this should, this makes sense. And this is something which is unsolved yet and we want to, you know, this is the next step for us to solve this big problem. And then APIs so that you can actually 
share data in a meaningful Ex way. Exactly, and also that other scientists from outside can you know, de develop algorithms, which then from the network, from the users within the network can be used in, in order to get, in order to analyze these data sets in more efficient or, yeah. So I'd, I'd love to take some audience questions. You can even ask him about being a European success if you'd like. Uh, just if you want to ask it. Yes, Ray, I'll repeat the question. What, list your four business models that we discussed at breakfast. Thank you. Yeah. So this is a very interesting story. When I start raising money, so I'm a medical doctor, and um, I, don't, didn't, I didn't know the business world, right? I'm creating this, this idea. And I went to so many investors. And the first thing what people asked when I showed the first four slides of what I want to do with science, they asked me, how do you want to make money? And I always left the room, because in my opinion, if I tell you the vision of what I'm trying to achieve, making money with this is the easier part. To change the mindsets of scientists is the harder part. Um, but I, I tell you what we do. So very simple is recruiting. Um, a very low brainer to say, okay, funding um, biotech firms or universities can use, use ResearchGate for filling up their positions which they have. Or if you're looking for a smart scientist in astrophysics, you can find him there. Um, this is what something you can monetize. Conferences, scientific conferences you can monetize. Building a marketplace for viruses, bacteria, DNA culture, all these things is also very simple, it sounds uh, creepy, but um, this is something what scientists are relying on, and this is something we could do a lot better with ResearchGate. And the craziest idea we have is helping large funding agencies where almost a trillion dollar every year is spent for research funding to make better decisions who to fund and who not to fund. And, sounds like, yeah. Yeah, and especially Matt Kohler, my first investor, asked me, as the first investor, did not ask me how I want to make money. He asked me how I would, six, how, what, what is my goal with ResearchGate? And I said to him, I want to win the Nobel Prize. And, um, yeah. Okay, Jim. Everybody in Sweden, vote for him. Jeff Jarvis. I was talking to a research scientist at a major farm, uh, pharmaceutical company recently. And he talked about all the negative results, trying to replicate academic results that they keep secret. Yes. Are you finding uh, buy-in from major corporations, or are you still in the academic world? It is 60-40 uh, right now, 60 academic, 40 um, bio, like pharma industry. Of course, that's a big change they have to go through, right? Like, I always call that open science. You, we have open source, which already works, but we need this for the whole scientific world. Um, and there is a way of being open at the same time being closed. I, of course, understand uh, biotech firms that they, you know, this is their business model. They're creating the next uh, drug against, you know, Alzheimer's, for example. They, they have to be some sort of a close, but I, I think they will understand in the future as more open they are, as more successful they will be. And um, this is something what we're not only changing in academia, but also in, in the industry, what also, you know, Bill Gates, when he invested, um, also saw that this is a huge potential we, we have to go for, yeah. And as you know, the, the rule now in commercial clinical trials is you need to publish your intention and then your results get published, good or bad. Go ahead. Yeah, why did you choose Berlin as location to run your company instead of San Francisco or Silicon Valley? Good question. No, um, very simple answer. I, when I talked to Matt and he invested the money, we, he said to me, Boston is a shitty place. Um, you should either go to San Francisco or go to Berlin. We decided for Berlin because, and we talked about it in the previous panel, there is already an ecosystem. And, but there hasn't been so many world-changing ideas. Plus, the city is full of art and um, music, which is type of creativity we need in order to build this world-changing idea. And I thought, this is something where I can go and can just build up this startup from there without this high competition in the Silicon Valley. And uh, this was definitely the right decision to do that. And I think we, with ResearchGate and some other companies, now building a new ecosystem of the next big startups. Just recently, eight weeks ago, Bill Gates visited our office in Berlin. Um, and again, I forgot a very, very funny story. The first time I met Bill Gates in France, um, um, I started the presentation, I opened up my bag, and the thing, and the moment where I'm bringing, taking out my laptop was a Mac. I said, shit, why do I have a Mac here? And it, he visited my offices just eight weeks ago, and I again forgot to switch my Mac to a Windows 
computer. I think he's um, living in the real world and is used to that. Any, any more questions? Uh, yes, over there. Just shout it out. Is the content yeah. vetted in any way? User what is it? The, so talk about how your oh. content gets peer so reviewed, the, so to yes. speak. So you only can register and sign up for ResearchGate if you an e have an email address of a whitelisted institution in our database. Uh, because we want to keep the quality high, um, and there are other platforms where you can discuss like rather public, public things regarding science. But the content is readable from outside for everyone. So everything is public, but if you want to contribute, you need an account from a whitelisted research institution. Or, or you need to be a special friend. A special like friend a, like you, yeah. <laughs> the first time we denied your account, which was yes. right, yeah. But the, the, the point is everybody has an identity and they get a reputation based on the other people in the system. And, and this is, yeah, this is very important because we want to, you know, we want to disrupt the publishing world. And in order to do that, we need to create a new way of measuring scientific reputation. In order to measure that in a sensible way, you need people in a network um, interacting on a high level of um, scientific knowledge. Yeah. And so I should probably ask you what I already asked you, but just for the audience, what's, what's the difference between you guys and Mendeley? Um, we have a much bigger ambition, right? Mendeley sold their company to Elsevier, which is the largest publisher, not a big supporter of open science. I know I said what something... <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, but it's... Um, I have a much bigger ambition, you know? I want to create an independent company uh, which, you know, which is different than just selling it. I don't, um, I don't think that, you know, selling the company to, to a publisher is that what we need in science. We need something different. This is what we're building. Thank you. So, ladies Can and I gentlemen, you saw him here. It's not just a social network. It's actually what the web is supposed to be, giving meaning to data. Thank you very much. Thank you.